All right. Hello and welcome to a new week. This week we are going to talk about bitwise things, so getting down and dirty with the memory representation of numbers, and then we'll talk about something a bit more high level, uh, not this lecture I don't think, but next, programming paradigms, the different ways that we can arrange our programs and our people so they can write better programs faster. Okay. For, for less money. So uh, let's start with bitwise operators, and I think you can take a wild guess and imagine what we're doing here. So we're, we're, we have some operators that I'm going to show you that operate on individual bits. Okay, so like the, if a number is made up of ones and zeros, we're going to be able to like access and change an individual bit inside of a number. Okay, it's going to be fun. So that is the idea. Uh, let us continue on uh, to the next slide. So first, uh, let's just review what binary numbers really are and what they look like. So uh, like here is the binary number four. Uh, let's let's do it all together. This is the ones place, this is the twos place, this is the fours place, this is the eights place. Uh, so this is the binary number four. One times two to the three, which is eight, plus zero times 2 to the 2, which is 4, uh, plus 1 times 2 to the 1, plus 1 times 2 to the 0, which is 8 plus 4, uh, sorry, 8 plus 2, plus 1, which is 11. Okay, so this is the binary number for 11. That is the idea. Okay, and if you want to go even further, this is the 2 to the 4's place, right? Plus to the ones place plus to the zeros place and that ends up being 19 okay so just remember how to do that uh, and yeah usually you have a bunch of room for your numbers uh, a lot of times we have 32 bits to hold uh, if you have the number zero it's just 32 zeros on and on and on until the end of time okay yeah so uh, yeah, we're about to talk about bitwise operators. Those operate on the actual individual bits of a number, which we haven't been able to look at so far. Uh, and then, yeah, integers hold, uh, they take up 32 bits, so you can store big, big numbers in, uh, in a single integer, because they take up 32 bits total. But something I've kind of swept under the rug so far is the fact that integers can hold negative numbers. But if it's just a, ones, a bunch of ones and zeros, like, where do we put the negative sign? Like, how does that work? So that, that'll be the first thing that we talk about. Okay, let's store negative numbers in our computer. Let's see how it's really doing it. Because that will uh, make it so that it's less confusing when we try and, like, access individual bits. Because it's doing it in a special way. All right, so uh, I guess the first question to ask is, what should the number negative one be? If I just had a bunch of ones and zeros, uh, what should it be? Okay, so whatever it is, it's going to be 32 bits long and adding it to the number one, which we know how to make, right? Let's pretend that we have just four bit integers. That's as big as they get. Adding our secret number to one should give us back zero. Okay, whatever this negative one is, adding it to one must give us back zero. That's what negative one means. So let's figure out what we need here, okay? this needs to be zero. So we can't have this be a zero, otherwise it would end up being a one in this place. You see that, the game that we're about to play? This is what negative one will be. So we know a uh, zero can't go there. What about, well, our only other option is a one, okay? Which means that we have carried over here, okay? Which means that there's a carry up here and still a question mark. And again, if we just kept this, uh, if we turned it into a zero, we'd have one here, but we want zero because this is the number that's negative one and we're adding one. It should give us back a bunch of zeros down here. Okay, that's what we need. So we're carrying, this must also be a one, okay? Because we want all zeros down here, four zeros. It's a four bit number, we say. So again, one plus one is one zero we carried once more. And because we need a zero down here, we've got to add another one. Okay, I think you see the pattern. So we need four ones. So one, 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 on and on and on forever is equivalent to negative one in four bit binary land. Okay, so 
if we have 32 bits to make up a number, negative 1 should just be all 1s, 32, num 32 ones long, okay? Negative 1 in, in binary is all 1s. You see that? That's quite nice. So, uh, yeah, we just uh, noticed that the final carry, because this is, again, 1 plus 1 goes out into the ether, there's no room to put another bit here, uh, that final number just gets washed away, okay? So we we take advantage of that in our encoding of negative numbers. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. Uh, so we can't uh, add an extra bit, and so that's why it becomes zero. All right. So uh, what should negative two be? It's going to be plus whatever it is. It's plus two makes it zero. All right. So let's figure out what this should be. Well, this should be a zero. That's fine for it to be a zero. Uh, this one now, though, it needs to be a zero, so we better put a one here, otherwise it would have ended up being a one, yeah? So this is what negative two is going to end up being. And so now we have a carry, and we want this to be a zero, so it has to be a one. And then we have another carry, and we want this to be a zero, so it has to be a one again. So one, 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 zero, with ones going that way if it's a longer bit number, that's equivalent to negative two, all right? So uh, the, the pattern is, you don't ever have to, like, guess anymore. The pattern is called two's complement, and I should probably put that in bold because it's an important topic. Uh, and that's how we store negative numbers in our computer. Uh, to make a two's complement number, what we do is we take the number, the, the positive version of the number, then we flip all the bits, flip, so that becomes a one, 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 zero, and then we add one to it, okay? So after flipping, it's called like, uh, one's complement. Don't ask me why. But then once we add one, it becomes the real number for negative one. Okay, and this works for everybody. Flip all of these numbers in two to make uh, one, one, zero, one, add a one. Oh man, that becomes one, 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 zero. So uh, that's how we get negative two. So positive to negative just like that. And uh, it even works in reverse. So if you have negative one, you want to make it positive one. You flip all the bits, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then add 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. It works, okay? So that's 2's complement, and uh, doing it to negative 1 turns it, uh, 1 turns it into negative 1, and vice versa, okay? So flip all the bits and add 1. That's how your computer is storing negative numbers. Cool, huh? So now, let's get into bitwise operators. We're ready. We know how our numbers are being uh, arranged. We... Uh, we want to get at those individual bits now, okay? Because sometimes it's nice to store things other than numbers inside of ints. Like, instead of declaring 32 variables, 32 Boolean variables, you have 32 true and false values sitting in an integer. You see that? And if you just access each one individually, you can get like, okay, uh, maybe this bit represents like uh, if you have an extra life. And this bit represents uh, whether you are, like, I don't know, riding a horse. <laughs> Whatever you want to encode. Uh, this is very uh, a very compact way of doing that. Okay? So it's nice to store things other than numbers inside ints. Bools are a good idea. So 32 Boolean variables can fit, right? Saves a ton of space because they're nice and packed in. Uh, and, yeah, I'm about to show you these ways of doing things with the individual bits of a number, like, okay, what's the twelfth bit? Let's set the third bit to one, things like that, okay? So, this thing called bitwise and, it lets you perform the boolean and operation on each bit of, of a number, and uh, it's easier to show you uh, this as an example. So, one, remember, it's going to be true, and zero represents false. So bitwise and looks like this, okay? If I want to bitwise and these two four-bit uh, four numbers, it's going to look like this, 0, 1, 1, 0. Okay, and in C++, the operator is the ampersand. Okay, so we're bitwise anding these two numbers. And what it does is it goes and it aligns each of those two numbers for each bit, and then it performs logical AND, that uh, that Boolean AND operation that we already know about, 
on each individual bit. So it's doing, okay, is it true that one and zero is true? No, that's false. They both have to be one for it to be true. Okay, is true and true, true? Yes, one. Is false and true, true? No, is true and false, true? No. Uh, yeah, so remember your, uh, your and table. Okay, so that it's just doing logical and on the individual bits and making a new number for you. Okay, so that's what bitwise and gives you. And I am so, so sorry because this ampersand has a third meaning. It, uh, in addition to taking the address of and making a reference, if you give two numbers in between the ampersand, uh, it's gonna do bitwise and, I'm so sorry. So let me show you this in code. Whee. So let's do vim uh, bitwise, not cpp, for lack of a better word. So let me show you bitwise and. This is this is the number what? Three, this is four and eight, right? So that's 11. This is 11 and uh, four, five, six, I think. And this gives back two. Okay, so let's confirm that. So I can say, see out, 11 ampersand two. It's doing bitwise and. And let's see if it's gonna be unhappy. I might need parentheses. I think I do, just for the way that uh, C++ is doing its precedence rules. Yeah, now it's happy. So this performs the bitwise and on 11 and 2, and it should print back to us this number that we came up with, 2. Okay, 11, and, oh sorry, 6, should, should print 2. Yay. Yay, so we got back two. Okay, that's quite nice. And that's what bitwise operations do. Uh, it might not seem like it right now, but bitwise and is good for getting a bit out. It's good for extraction. So for example, if I wanna know whether or not the third bit is set of a number, and let's pretend that it goes, this is the zeroth bit, oneth bit, toothth bit, threeth bit, uh, so, this is the third bit, and I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna know what that is. Is it a one or is it a zero? What I can do is and with a one only in that spot. Zero's everywhere else. So it's gonna force everybody else to be a zero, and only if this one is also set will it make it a one. Can you see that? So checking, check if ampersanding, if anding by this number with the third bit only set, If that gives you back a non-zero number, then you know it worked. Okay, so let's do 11 and it with one, two, four, with just the number eight, okay? This is 11 ampersand eight. And this should give us back eight, okay? That is the number with the one in the third position. Okay, so it is uh, eight, beautiful. And so we know that that bit is set. And we can just, uh, the, the normal way of checking if a bit was set is we do the ampersand, we do the and operation by this number and we check, hey, is this unequal to zero? True, and that becomes true if the third bit is set. Yeah, and again, I think it wants parentheses. Yay. All right, that prints one for true. Okay, so that was bitwise and, and now we have a few more. So next, let's talk about bitwise or, which performs logical or on each bit. So there is a pattern forming. So for bitwise and, it was you take what you used to know with the two ampersands and then drop one of those. 
for bitwise or, it's you take the or that you used to know and get rid of one of those pipe characters. And so bitwise or looks like this, and it ors together every bit. So if you have your, uh, now let's make up new numbers, one, zero, zero, one, and one, one, uh, zero, zero. If you or those together with the pipe character, bitwise or, what happens is it takes each individual bit and performs logical or on it. Okay, so is true or false true? It sure is. Is false or false true? That's the one time it's not, right? And then the rest of these have ones in them somewhere, so, uh, sorry. And then the rest of these have ones in them somewhere, and so we have one and one. Okay, so that is the bitwise or. Uh, it's like, if any of these, like, if either of these were one, we're going to make the final answer a one. Okay, so this is uh, 9 base 10 ORed with uh, let's see here. This is 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Base 10. And that gave us back, apparently, uh, 12 plus 1, which is 13. Yeah. Okay, so let's or together 9 and 12 now. Eee. Bitwise or. Okay. And we get back 13, yay! And so it just took, it found all the ones in each of these and made sure to keep those. Okay. So bitwise or is all about creating ones, whereas bitwise and is all about like creating zeros, if you can think about it that way. Okay. Uh, okay. So yeah, or always gives back true when at least one side is true. And Similarly, and there's another uh, analogy, bitwise and is good for bit extraction, like getting information. Uh, bitwise or is good for setting information, for setting new bits, okay? Because you just need to put a one in that bit location and use the or, right? If I have some number, one, zero, one, zero, and I want to make sure its zeroth bit is set, I just need to or it with a bunch of zeros everywhere else and a one right there. That will make sure that everything else gets carried over. If it was one, it'll stay at one. If it's a zero, it'll stay at zero. And then for that one bit that I wanted to set, it'll make sure that it's a one. You see that? That's the beauty of it. Okay. And if it was already set, like we have it here, it'll just keep it set. It's not a big deal. Uh, but if it wasn't set, it will set it. Okay. That is the beauty of this. So this is uh, 10 base 10, boring it with one base 10 gives back. Uh, apparently 11, base 10. Okay, it's going to set that one bit. We want to set this bit. Okay. With just one. So that'll set the, the zeroth bit in the number 10. Okay. And now we have 11. Isn't that fun? We can pick out individual bits as long as we like know what the number should be. Like eight is uh, it's one with three zeros at the end of it. Okay, for the uh, zero, ones place, twos place, fours place, and eights place. Okay, and of course one is a bit with the zeroth bit set or a, a number with the zeroth bit set. Okay, so that is bitwise or it's good for setting bits. Okay, well, that's not too bad. And yeah, let's do bitwise not now. Okay, so let us do uh, bitwise not to flip all the bits of a number. All right, so what it does is given a number, if you say not that with the little tilde character, what it does is it converts it to, it doesn't take another number, it's a unary operation, not a binary operation, uh, which is ironic because it's working on a binary number. Uh, it flips all the bits, so the one becomes a zero in each, in each spot, and the zero becomes a one. One, one, zero. Okay? So uh, this is essentially how ne negation happens. We can negate ourselves. Okay? Isn't that fun? So yeah, this. Uh, is the not operation. It turns, uh, let's see, 8, 9 into uh, 
this is six. Okay, so tilde, or some people call it twiddle. We twiddle the nine and end up with six. Uh, unfortunately, that's not what's going to happen on this computer because there are a bunch of zeros over here, unfortunately. So it's going to make them all ones, and it's going to be a weird looking number. So that's not as useful uh, because of the the zeros at the at the start. Because it flips all the bits and nine is well it's one zero zero one, but with a bunch of zeros over here. Yeah. Total totaling thirty two bits. But you can discover what it should be, and uh, so the answer it gives back is negative 10, apparently. And what you can do is uh, we can make a negation operation. Negate a number x by actually performing two's complement ourselves. Remember that two's complement is just flip all the bits and add one. So. Uh, x equals flip all the bits in x and then add 1. And that's 2's complement. Return the new x. That'll make the negative number, the negative version of the number. Isn't that crazy? So this should print back negative 9. And I'm pretty sure there's already, yeah, there's already a function called negate in the standard library. So, uh, I don't know, twos complement, or negate twos complement. That one isn't taken yet. How about that? So it should print negative nine now. Isn't that nice? We got negative nine. Beautiful. So that is bitwise not, bitwise negation. And uh, thank you past me. Uh, I'm going to make a make file for us so that we gain some more practice with that. All right. So let's make a make file. Edit a file called make file in my current directory. And remember that uh, we're going to have it automate this process of compiling things. Okay. So we're going to take this eventually and uh, turn it into a rule. So we want to make the thing called bitwise. That's what we want. That's our target. And colon, we say, OK, what do I need? Bitwise dot cpp. I need this. And then I can compile it into this. Yeah. And then we tab over uh, on the next line. And as many lines as we need, we give all the rules that we, uh, all the terminal commands that make this thing that we wanted, our target named bitwise. OK? And it just so happens that this one command will do that. It'll take this, uh, this thing that we know we have now and compile it. And it will output a file called uh, bitwise. OK, so now uh, we can go back to this one, change it a little bit. We can negate 10, maybe, uh, instead. And just saying make will run the first rule, so that will work. You can also be more precise and say make bitwise, OK? Or just make by itself. It's all the same. And that will actually run this rule, save us some typing, and do the new thing, OK? So that is bitwise operations. And actually now, this isn't a weird negative number. It's just almost negative 9. It's 1 away. We didn't add the 1. So it has to be negative 10. Isn't that nice? OK, so that's bitwise not. It's good for uh, rolling your own negation. Uh, now I have two more. All right, so this one is apparently a, a spelling error, but it's not. So uh, XOR is its name. I'll say it as XOR, but it's short for this thing called exclusive OR. OK, so remember that this is, uh, this is regular OR over here. And then I'm going to show you uh, exclusive OR. over here. So regular OR 
took some numbers, if, uh, I don't know, x and, let's call them x and y, x or y, and I'm going to write just t for true. Uh, I won't spell it out, okay? So this is, and I don't want to confuse you with like C++ stuff, so maybe I should just call this uh, or, like that. Okay, so x or y is logical or if we got our options of true, 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 false, false, true, and false, false. So x or y is true, 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 and false. The only time it's false is when they're both false. Okay, so that's regular or. But what I'm about to show you is exclusive or, x or. So if we had x and y, x, x or y is the following. True, 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 false, false, true, false, false are our options again. But x or doesn't like it when they're both true. These are false and these ones are true. It's exclusive or. One is true or the other, but not both. Okay? Yeah, so uh, regular or is also known as inclusive or. And so it's like, okay, they could both be true if you wanted them to be. It's still true. But exclusive or is true only if one of the sides is true. Exactly one. Okay? You see the difference? This is the one line that's the difference. It's like, is it true exclusively that one exactly one of these is true? No, they're both true. So the output is going to be false, weirdly enough. Okay, and uh, the bitwise OR operator is this caret operation. And maybe when you were first learning the math stuff in C++, you thought that this meant power. And the answer that it gave you back was a weird one. Well, now you know why it gave you back what it gave back. It was doing bitwise XOR, okay? So here is my example of bitwise XOR, 1, 1, I don't know, 1, or 0, 1, about 0, 1. Okay, so what is this going to do, XOR, with the caret operation? Well, these are the same, false, 0. These are different, 1. These are different, 1. These are different, 1. Isn't that cool? So uh, that is XOR. And if you think about it, XOR is kind of doing addition. It's kind of uh, almost doing addition. It's just forgetting about carrying things. Uh, let me show you that. It's almost doing one bit addition. Okay, so like, uh, let me, here are all the options. Zero plus zero, that's zero. Uh, one plus zero, that's one. Uh, then we have zero plus one is zero and one plus one is zero because you got to carry that one right and it just so happens that this is the same for xor you see that true false false true false true excuse me how dare i it's the same it's actually doing addition and uh on one bit. If you chain some things together, you can gain real addition. And this is actually how the processors in our computer are really doing the addition operation. They're secretly doing a specialized version of XOR that also knows about how to carry things to the next side. Isn't that cool? XOR is essentially addition, and that's exactly how our computers are performing addition, actually. It's a bunch of XORs chained together with some carries involved. Okay, so that is bitwise XOR. Might as well give you an example. Uh, this is, let's see, one, zero, one, one. And these zeros over here trailing for 32-bit numbers, they remain zeros still, which is nice. So this is uh, eight, nine, 10, 11, base 10, XOR with uh, four, five base 10. And this gave us back 8, 19, 11, 12, 13, 14, base 10. Okay, so that's ex uh, bitwise exclusive OR, XOR, 11, 5. Oops. 
and exclusive or is this caret character. And that's why, that is exactly why it gives you back a number that is nothing like the power, right? There we go. And it's 14. It's like, okay, was it subtracting or doing some kind of weird addition plus subtraction? No, it was doing bitwise exclusive or. Okay, so uh, we are now to the home stretch. This is going to be, I think, the last slide for the day because the next topic is very different. Uh, the, the final thing that I want to talk about in bitwise land is shifting things, okay? And shifting just means moving numbers to left and right of, of themselves. So we have uh, left shift because you can move a number to the left and right shift because you can move a number to the right. And let's first talk about left shifting. For left shift, uh, let's start with a number like 1011. When you say, hey, I want to left shift that by two, all it means is just uh, make the number bigger, like move these bits to the left, and now we have empty spaces here for zeros. Okay, so it becomes, uh, it turns the number into 1011, and then it moved it to the left, so it opened up room over here, and we fill those with zeros. Okay, so it made it like that. Okay, that's what it does. So uh, notice that it's actually multiplying by a power of two. I just multiplied this number by four. Uh, this was eight, nine, 10, 11. 11 times two squared. This is, if you shift left by two, you multiply by four. Uh, well, that should be 44, right? And this just so happens to be that. This is the ones, twos, fours, eighths, sixteenths, and thirty-twoths place. So it looks like we have twelve plus uh, thirty-two. Hey, that's forty-four. Okay, and this works for everybody. Uh, if you had like one one, like that was your number, zero zero one one, and you shift that left by one, that means you add a zero here, which means you multiply it by two. Okay, that is uh, zero zero one one zero. And so what was uh, three became six. This is four, this is two. Make it six. Okay, so in general, left shifting, like a number n by uh, i, it gives you back n times two to the i. Okay, that's what it does. That is something you can remember and it's useful. Uh, it used to be in some computers that shifting was easier to do for the processor than actually doing multiplication. And so you saved time whenever you multiplied by a factor of two, uh, by a power of two, because it translated the instruction into a shift, which is, which is fun to think about. It's just as fast in our computers these days, though. Uh, okay, yeah, so that's left shift. Uh, how about right, right shift? That is pretty much exactly the same. Uh, like if I had this number, let's pretend, oh gosh, let's pretend that we have eight bit numbers because this is gonna get weird. Okay, let's pretend that this is our number, zero, 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 uh, zero, one, one, how about one, zero, one. Okay, and I want to right shift that by one. What it's gonna do is move the number this way and it depends uh, the number that it, puts in because it's making space like it uh, it's shifting it's taking all of these guys and it's uh, like moving them that way I'm sorry all of these guys and moving them this way the one kind of goes away because it goes off the end but the rest of these get saved so it's uh, one two three zero one zero now and uh, sorry there's another zero here so this is the number and then we made space over here now because we shifted it right and the question is, what do we put here? The answer is zero if it was a positive number and one if it was a negative number. Okay, it's, it's very weird. It, it either brings in a zero or a one on the left uh, if it was positive or negative. And the reason it does that is to make it so that it always does division. Okay, it makes, it tr it makes sure that you're always really doing uh, integer division by a power of two. Okay. If you have an unsigned in, it's always going to bring in a zero. Okay, that's the idea. 
So it divides by powers of 2 is what it's doing. So for example, let's just keep it easy on ourselves. If I had 1, 0, 0, uh, that is 4 in binary, and I shifted that right by 2, then it's just going to become 1, right? Just 1. So that was 4, this is 1, so I did 4 divided by 2 to the 2. Yeah, that's what that does. That's the idea. It does kind of do something a little bit differently when it's negative. Uh, it's not exactly integer division by 2, but uh, it's close enough. Okay, that's why we bring in the 1. Uh, so that is all of shifting. And now, I guess I might as well give you an example just quickly, and that'll be that. Dun dun dun. So, uh, I don't know, see out. I don't know, what did we have before? We had, let's see, we had 11, left shift 2. We had 4, right shift 2. And those were uh, what? Those were 44 and 1. Multiply by 4, divide by 4. Cool, huh? So, uh, that's all of that. And this brings us to a very, very important piece. Uh, if you ever want to, like, use and and or to set a bit or get a bit, you can use shifting, okay? Using shifts to get slash set bits. Like, if you want to set the, uh, I don't know, third bit of a number n, how do you get this number? Like, here's your number n, I want to set this, uh, let's pretend it was 0. I want to set this bit right here, so I need to make this number, right, so I can or by it. Well, because of shifts, it's very easy to get this number, I don't have to like do, okay, in my math, in my mind, I gotta do all this math, it's 8. No, this is equivalent to doing 0, 0, 1, 1, ORed with 1, left shift 3. Put three zeros on the end of it. Get me the third bit, please. That is what we want, okay? If you want to set the third bit of a number n, OR by 1, left shift 3. You see that? If you want to get the third bit of a number n and by 1 left shift 3, that gets you, it turns this into the number 1 with three zeros at the end. It shifts it left by that amount. And so now we have a 1 sitting in this number with zeros everywhere else that's uh, trying to extract or set this bit right here. Okay? That is the beauty of it all. Okay. So yeah, you can use shift to get and set bits. So instead of doing uh, this one, hey, is the third bit set? You'd say something like this. Not and eight, it's one left shift three. This is easier for programmers to read as, okay, I'm trying to see if the third bit is set in 11. I'm anding it with it, making sure that it's not zero. And so that gives me the same answer true that we had up here. Okay, so lots of nitty-gritty bit things, but they are useful. All right, so I think that's all I have for you today. We, we have come far. We've learned about bitwise operations. We are acting on the individual bits of a number, and we're also uh, masters at uh, understanding how negative numbers are stored in our computers. So that's what I have for you today. Uh, we're going to come back in the next lecture and talk about high-level things. So there won't be a whole lot of code in the next lecture. So uh, either I'm sorry or you're welcome. So I'll see you then.